Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Chop the Rock. I am Diana Long, Director of River Market Operations, and today our guest chef is Trey Reed, who is Assistant Chief of Communications for the Arkansas Game and Fish. We are going to do some really fun, good wild game cooking today. Absolutely. We are going to do some, uh, some venison to start with. We're going to oh, cook so a, a dish, a sort of a Jamaican-inspired dish of venison and an acorn squash and a Jamaican curry. And I mean, it is great for uh, a, a cool fall or cool winter night. It's got a lot of spice and a lot of heat. We're gonna have some habanero chilies in there. Mm -hmm. So great to maybe, you know, go with a cold red stripe if you wanna stick with the Jamaican theme or there whatever. You go, there you go. It's a really good recipe, Diana, for, you know, if you've got an older deer and, uh, you know, that might need a little more TLC, if you will, something to, kind of make the meat a little more tender. Mm -hmm. Some of these exotic flavors, some curry and some allspice and stuff really kind of, I don't want to cover up the, the, the wild game. That's why we hunt is because we enjoy that. Sure. But we might, some animals need to be tamed a little bit more, some, some wild game. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the, that's sort of the plan here. I think that is a great plan. And, and we had kind of talked about this as we were getting ready to do this show that traditionally in Jamaica, you would, they either do chicken in jerk, which they do a lot, right. but goat is a very popular. Goat or mutton would be a really popular way that you would, if you were in Jamaica, to find a, a curry dish. Of course, they put curry on Every, fish yeah. and chicken and just about anything. Lots of seafood, obviously, with it being an island. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but mutton or goat would be one of the more traditional. And so that's why I think the venison translates really well for that. Right, and in, in my mind, that's why the older... Uh, you know, saying this worked really well if you had an, a little bit of an older deer, um, not like a, a, a nice young doe as we were talking. Uh, it doesn't mean necessarily that's been in your freezer forever. Right, it's exactly. Bad idea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but if the deer you, um, you brought home or you have is not a super tender one, and that in my mind equates to the how long and the way that you would have to cook down goat to tenderize it Abs and mutton absolutely. In, in the same kind of absolutely. way. So. A young deer, you know, I like to just, you know, very simple preparation, especially like the, the loin or the mm -hmm. back strap. Just put some salt and pepper, maybe some rosemary and thyme on it, a little olive oil, put it on the grill, cook it medium rare, and that's all you need to do. Right. But so this is a recipe that's going to be better to, to sort of sort of like I said give a little TLC to that older deer that might not be as tender and as tasty as, as a young uh, yearling doe or something like that. Good deal. I am excited about this and I, I know that we are in good hands because this is just one of the many things that you do for, for Game and Fish. Yeah. You, you actually cook for um, have some episodes on your own that y'all do? Yeah, we have a, a television show called Arkansas Wildlife, and it uh, airs on uh, KARK in Central Arkansas, as well as Z42. Uh, you can check local, local listings for showtime, you know, you as go. they say. <laughs> uh, but we do a lot of, of hunting and fishing episodes, uh, probably a good mix of that, and also just the conservation work that we do at Game and Fish, behind the scenes, how our fisheries and wildlife biologists uh, keep the natural state true to its name. But one thing we've been doing a lot more of lately is incorporating cooking because I think a lot of people, we get really a lot of positive feedback uh, about that. It kind of completes the circle. You know, you, you, you go out and whether you hunt ducks or deer or squirrels or uh, rabbits or some other small game, or if you know, you're a big angler and like to keep some of what you catch, that when people see the circle completed, you know, it, it really kind of creates an appreciation. The other thing that we're learning is that with the locavore movement and with this push for mm -hmm. folks to, you know, want organically sourced protein, it doesn't get any more organic and natural Absolutely. than wild game and fish. And we're blessed in Arkansas to have a uh, uh, very diverse uh, geography, you know, from the mountains in the west and north down to the delta and coastal plain in the south and east. and so there, there's a little bit of something for everybody and there a is. lot of great opportunities out there you know we're the duck capital of the world and mm -hmm. uh, so just lots of lots of ways to get that natural protein that you want and so hopefully we can we can share some tips and uh and tell folks how they might uh 
might convert that. You know, everybody likes fried deer steak and, and take, there, your, yeah. take your your duck and, and breast and cut it into strips and flour. And there's absolutely nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I like, that's what we like to do in the show is kind of take it, kind of kick it up a notch right. and show you. Uh, and, and some of the recipes can be a little more complicated, but they don't have to be. I mean, this, this recipe is, you know, just a handful of ingredients, really. It's uh, like a stew, really. It is. It's a, just, it's, once you get it all in the pot, it just goes. You are exactly right. That's exactly right. And so, you know, we're going to cook this on the stove top today, but I bet you could put this in a crock pot um, and get the same effect you and know, not even have to be in the know, kitchen that long. The, uh, the pressure cookers are coming back. And, you know, one. you got the instant yes. pot. I, I bought one on Prime Day uh -huh. uh, back in, in July, and I thought that this would be a perfect recipe for for, for an instant pot or a pressure cooker, but or like you said, a crock pot. I mm -hmm. mean, just basically throw it all in there. Uh, before you go to work in the morning, when you come home, the house is gonna smell fabulous yes. and uh, you're gonna wanna dig right in. I think that's perfect, that is perfect. So let's let's get this show on the road. I all am right. ready. What? I, I guess let's, wh why don't we start, the first thing we're gonna do, we're, we're gonna take our, our venison, and I've got some pre-tenderized, just the way they came from the processor, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, so they're already pretty tender. But we're gonna cut it up into chunks. So okay. you wanna work on that? I am happy to work and on that. We'll just cut those into like a little one inch, um, one to two inch bite chunks. Size. Yeah, bite size. Okay. And so that meat's already slightly. Oh, they, they, I have tenderized it. It tenderized. looks almost like that minute steak. Yeah, you that's would ex get. exactly what it's mm -hmm. like. That's exactly what that's like. And then when we get that ready, we're just going to kind of put a spice rub on it. Gotcha. That's going to uh, let that, you know, infuse some flavors into the meat. And it's, you know, the first time I had this, it was, uh, I was just blown away by how tasty it was. It's, it's got, we're gonna use acorn squash today, but you can use any type of winter squash. You can use pumpkin. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's, it's really kind of, you know how you cook that pot of chili the first cold night in the fall? Mm -hmm. Th this is sort of that, I get that same sort of feeling with this. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it really is great on a, on a, on a cool, fall or, or winter night. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use about a pound of venison. This is slightly over a pound, but uh, it uh, you, you can just double the recipe if you want to make more. Right. If you got to feed, this will easily feed four to six people. And I bet this is also good leftover. So if you're, uh -huh. if you're a, I mean, this is those one of those kind of dishes, kind of like a roast or a chili that are almost better the next day after they yep, set those overnight. Yeah, flavors really get in there. Yeah, and so this would be something that you could cook for yourself or just for a couple of people and eat on it again, which if I'm gonna go through the trouble of cooking at home, which is seldom, <laughs> I, would, I would like very much to be able to take a break from that for a couple of days and, and enjoy what I've, what I've cooked a couple of times. So that well, means mostly in the winter time. It's a I great, cook. you know, uh, my wife is always on my case about uh, doing some meal prep on uh -huh. uh, on Sunday, Saturdays and Sundays, so uh -huh. it's not such a rush to get everything done during the week. And uh, this would be a good dish to do that with because it, it does, it keeps really well. Mm -hmm. And like you said, those flavors infuse. While you're, I'm gonna go ahead and get some of our, our veggies going here. Okay. Do we need to uh, blanch, go ahead and start our Yes, we're going to do that. I'm going to, we're going to use some, um, some whole tomatoes. You can use canned tomatoes if you want, but I the, this just love the freshness, especially oh, yeah. these heirloom tomatoes. So I've got some water going back here and we're going to just let those sit in there for about 30 seconds or so. Okay. And that's going to, we're going to blanch those because it makes it a lot easier to peel. Those don't take long at all. We don't want to cook the tomatoes. We just want to Kind of blister the skin a little bit, and we're going to drop them in that Ooh, ice look, bath. Look, it's already over there. coming off. Yep. So. Here, there we go. And there we go. So I'm going to Easy. leave that water boiling because we're going to do the same thing with our acorn squash here. Right. If you ever tried to peel an acorn squash, it's not fun. It, yeah. uh, it'll take a little bit. It, it is a, quite a bit of like you need a hatchet to cut through. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, or a really strong sous chef. So I'm gonna take this curry powder. 
going to use a couple tablespoons there. This is actually a Jamaican curry, which you can find in some international markets. Um, so easy to get things off the internet nowadays, too, you know. So you can, um, you probably won't find it at Kroger or right. Edwards Food Giant or something like that. But, but you can get things off the internet. And, and we've started to get some really nice international markets in Little Rock. That's coriander seed, ground coriander seed and a little bit of allspice. About a teaspoon of each of the coriander and the allspice. Allspice, you mentioned you like the, you like the jerk chicken. Mm -hmm. That is the, allspice is the key ingredient in uh, Jamaican jerk Getting seasoning. Getting that, that barbecue flavor It's what flavor gives it that flavor and, and it, uh, you know, you combine it with brown sugar and some other things mm -hmm. and it gets that nice crust glaze, on, yeah. the, on the outside of it. But even as you were just sprinkling that on, it it had a distinctive Jamaican curry smell to it that, and I, I, I like curry. I've done the yellow curry. I have done green curry. Um, I like to put a little green curry in like a chicken salad, like a, Oh yeah. You know, like it just adds a, another layer of flavor, but that, that was distinctively Jamaican. But let's say, because curry is not necessarily for everybody. Some people are not big fans. Yeah, yeah, like um, um, I have the thing where if I have too much cilantro, it tastes like soap. Yes. You know, so some people kind of, you know, have that. So if you, if you wanted, you were really interested in this recipe, but you're just not a fan of curry, it'd be really easy to take and substitute out the spices and the ginger leave everything else in there and maybe do some um, chili powder, some cumin. That's a great point. You basically make it a Southwestern uh, Mexican type flavor, almost mm -hmm. like a chili, but maybe almost like a deconstructed chili. Mm -hmm. uh, use your, you, you know, some cumin. Uh, this has got garlic in it, so you probably want to leave that. Sure. Uh, if you want to tame the heat, instead of using these habaneros, use a jalapeno. Uh, right. Kind of not, habaneros are, 100,000 plus on the Scoville scale mm -hmm. and jalapenos are about five to 10. So it's, right. you know, much, uh, much, much milder chili there. You know, add some, some, some cumin, some paprika, or just, you know, if you like a particular other type of uh, cuisine or a yeah. spice sort of blend, try that. Uh, and like you said, to start with, we're essentially just making a stew and uh, right. you can tailor the, the flavors to what you like. I really like this Jamaican curry, though. It just uh, kind of puts me in an island frame mm -hmm. of mind. Who doesn't like an island frame of mind? Right? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> why anybody wouldn't. But, you know, we, we just also want people to don't be afraid to experiment. You know, it's harder to experiment with baking because it is so right. chemically scientific with how things do. Absolutely. But, you know, in cooking, experiment. Have you fun know, with it. I, I read a great article the other day talking about how learn which flavors kind of complement one another mm -hmm. and sort of, you know, try different things with those and uh, have some staple spices and other things in your kitchen that you can kind of your go-to's. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of, of uh, both Caribbean and, and Mexican cuisine. So a lot of my things are kind of, you know, that area around the Gulf of Mexico. Right. That's, 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 that's my wheelhouse. That's where I like to go. Uh, but, you know, you might like Asian cuisine or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Eastern European or whatever, Italian, mm -hmm. Mediterranean. There's, you just kind of find that spot you like and, and work in there and then start to branch out to try different things. That's a great idea. Okay, so this needs to be refrigerated. We're going to refrigerate that for at least an hour. Okay. Uh, so it, you don't, don't be afraid to leave it in there three or four hours. Basically, we're just infusing the meat with those really exotic flavors from that curry and allspice. And the longer it sits, the more that's going to get in there really good too. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Okay. So while that's do while that's uh, uh, sort of infusing with flavor, we're going to work on our vegetables here. We're going to dice some onions and the tomatoes and so see, just blanching just for that 30 seconds or so. I mean, you don't even really need a knife to peel the skin. The skin Isn't that already so nice? just peels right away. I'm gonna check my acorn squash back here. And that should make that I'm much I'm excited to see to if that works. Yeah, we're, we're trying something new. <laughs> Again, don't be afraid to experiment a little bit in your kitchen. You can dice these. They don't have to be a really fine dice. I just, 
I find that if you, not coarse or roughly chopped, but they, they kind of blend in and, and impart more flavor mm -hmm. when you do that. So Diana, what's your, what, what type of, do you have like a cuisine that you're really into that you like to, uh, you like to work in, in that, uh, on a certain palate, if you will? Um, you could pretty much put garlic salt on anything and I would eat it. I really like a lot of garlic. I am a soul food junkie. Okay. So, well. so it's that food I grew up on, small town Arkansas. You know, that's all, my grandparents only knew how to cook that way. Sure. And no. so try to try to find ways to make that a little bit healthier. I give you, I'm going to tell you, it has nothing to do with this recipe, but I have a friend who, uh, he smoke dries a lot of peppers. You, everybody's heard of chipotle, which is essentially a, a smoked and dried jalapeno, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you can get lots of other peppers, milder ones, you know, sweet peppers even, uh, Italian marconis. Add that to a pot of greens mm. and with a little bit of, you know, maybe olive oil or other vegetable oil, and you will swear that there's meat in there. You, yeah. Uh, it, it, it just, it, that smoky flavor mm -hmm. just makes you think, oh, what, what it, tricks, it tricks your uh, That's tongue. a great vegetarian option to a ham hock. Absolutely. Well, that's, well, you know, when you started talking so, soul food, that was my first thought was how the, uh, how you got to got to uh you got to put a ham hock or some bacon or some some sort of pork fat in, uh, mm -hmm. in most most of our uh, our southern cooking but you don't have to you can uh if you if you want to eat a little bit healthier mm -hmm. I, I don't eat a lot of of soul food just because there's it tastes better when it's not healthy cooked <laughs> <laughs> but i tell you being here in the river market in the market hall every day um it smells like bacon in the mornings here. <laughs> and oh man, it's hard. So these are, I'm chopping these pretty small here. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. However, it, it, it doesn't have to be a super fine chop. Again, you know, those tomatoes, especially those, uh, mm -hmm. those uh, Cherokee purples, they're so juicy that when, when you put them in the pot, it's it's going to become tomato sauce essentially. That's right. That's right. I really like that. Like at our farmers market that we have here, it it seems like in the last ten years or so, there's this huge variety of tomatoes that yes. that I guess growing up you just had tomatoes. Yeah, we had the Bradley County pinks, and that's about it. I grew up in Pine Bluff, so okay. that you know it was just down the road to Warren where they have the Pink Tomato Festival mm -hmm. every year. And I never cared for tomatoes uh, when I was younger. And uh, I, I tried them again when I was uh, about oh, in my 30s. And, and I think the key was I had one of these really good, fresh, vine ripened tomatoes as opposed to the, the red styrofoam that we often get in the grocery store. Uh, and uh, much to my surprise, I became a, a tomato fan. And now, like you said, I. Uh, I really get a I really get a kick out of the the variety of, of tomatoes that are available uh, at the farmers market. I'm a big uh, I'm a big visitor to the farmers market. I'm I'm there many Saturday mornings. You know, I had that exact same experience with tomatoes growing up, and we'll only eat them if they come from a friend's that's, garden or from our farmers market. That's here. pretty much the way I am too. It's funny how our taste change. Over, over the years. It like is, that. it is. And I'm glad it did because I was really missing out. I got made a lot of fun <laughs> right. of by my family sure. for not eating the tomatoes, but um, they have to, again, they have to be fresh. Store-bought does not work for Just me. Just not, not the same thing, is it? Mm -mm. So we've got, we've got lots of stuff that we're going to continue chopping up here. So while we do that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about some of the stuff that y'all have got going on at Game and Fish? Oh, we've got so much stuff going on at Game and Fish. Of course, you, you know, Game and Fish has been around for over 100 years, but in its current uh, manifestation since the 1940s, uh, uh, when Amendment 35 passed, it created essentially the modern Game and Fish Commission. And it essentially charges us with uh, 
you know, conserving the uh, fish and wildlife resources of the state. And, and that's not just the animals we hunt and fish for, but non-game animals as well. Everything from monarch butterflies that are making their way from Canada to Mexico each fall uh, to, uh, you know, black bears. Uh, we brought black bears back in Arkansas. So, you know, and most folks probably know about those things. Uh, that, that we do, that mm -hmm. managing the habitats and managing the, the species themselves. But keeping if you an don't, eye on their health too. I mean, y'all are out there looking at health issues and diseases. Absolutely. And, um, yeah. You know, food sources and maybe even whatever expanding populations are doing to the habitats. I, exactly. You know, feral hogs uh, are, have been on our landscape for a long time, but their populations have really blown up over the past uh, several years, probably last 10, 20 years. And uh, it's, uh, they're, they're creating a lot of uh, habitat degradation. And uh, so we're, you know, we're trying to trap hogs on our properties and work with private landowners to, to trap hogs on private lands to, you know, try to get rid of some of those, the, those issues. But, you know, really the key to wildlife management is, is habitat, whether we're talking fisheries or we're talking, uh, you know, woods or fields or whatever. Uh, most critters are products of the, the soil that, that they walk around on, or in the case of fish, the soil that's on the bottom of the lake. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of large scale habitat projects on, on our lakes. We've done over the last few years. Uh, we have aging lakes in Arkansas, so we're, we're trying to uh, add some habitat structures, either natural, like in the form of, of trees, mm -hmm. or removing invasive cedars from, like say, Corps of Engineer parks and dropping those in, like hundreds and hundreds, I mean. And they all, it creates fish habitat, but it also creates a great fishing spot for anglers because right. little fish concentrate around that and that draws in the big fish like walleye and bass and crappie that, you know, that our anglers see. But you know, one of the great things, you know, downtown here, uh, just steps from the river market is our Central Arkansas Nature Center. And you can learn so much about what the Game and Fish does there. We've also got nature centers in Pine Bluff, Jonesboro, and, and Fort Smith. We're uh, getting ready to build a nature and education center in Northwest Arkansas as well. Um, but those are great places to kind of, if you want to get involved in the outdoors, if you want to learn how to, you know, source your own native organic natural protein like venison mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever, that's a, we can teach you how. I mean, and we're really eager to teach you how. We've got great folks. I mean, you've had Holly Berdeja or Holly Sanders uh, from our uh, Nature Center on the yes. show before. I think she did some Dutch oven cooking. She did, and it was so good. Holly and the rest of the staff down there are so good. At, you know, we like to, you know, that's a place where we can connect people with nature. Uh, and, and even if you have no idea, you've never done it before, this is a good place. It's kind of a, a springboard into whatever activity and it's not just consumptive activities like hunting and fishing but if you want to learn how to how to paddle a kayak or a canoe uh, good places to go hiking uh, places to go see birds whatever we really just want people to get outside and enjoy nature right I and mean, they even have like the uh, master gardeners even has beautiful That's landscaping around and it's all um, native species of plants and they're all very well labeled. And so I mean, like, if you're looking for something that you might think, let's say you're doing some landscaping, oh, it is time to get that out. Yeah, it? we're gonna get that out. I was, I, continue on. I was just gonna, I, I was, got, forgot that we had that in there. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's not cooked too much. Luckily it's a tough squash. No, no, it's not. Real tough squash. So, um, um, you know, anyway, so they, they can teach you about those, those kinds of things, like w what the plant species absolutely. are, so all kinds of questions that you might have, about, you know. You can um, learn so much there. And, you know, we're unfortunately losing participation in, in hunting and, and fishing nationally and to a lesser degree here in Arkansas. And I don't want it to sound, you know, it's not that, it's not necessarily just a funding issue because the sale of hunting and fishing licenses does fund conservation. Sure. And as I mentioned, not just for, you know, deer and ducks and those things that we think about, but also for non-game animals. Uh, but more importantly, if we lose, if we continue to lose participation, and even in some of, you know, bird watching and kayaking and, and canoeing, we're gonna kind of lose our connection to that and future generations won't have that strong connection to the natural world and then everybody's gonna lose. So it's more right. about creating an ethic of environmental stewardship, conservation stewardship, 
as we move forward. You know, we're, we're very urban. We're, oh, you know, yeah. the society's become urban. Technology is everywhere you look. Uh, but, you know, I, I think, and, and I think it's, you know, most of your folks at Game & Fish are gonna say the same thing, that that connection to nature is really important. I mean, we, we used to live in caves and survived in nature, you know, our, our species. Uh, and so uh, we wanna kind of maintain that connection and, and, and maintain uh, the natural state in its, in its best state uh, into the future, so. If you would like to introduce your kids to something and learn about it yourself and you don't know these things, the Nature Center, as well as the other resources they all have, is Absolutely. a great way to get started great on place. all and of that. And we find that more and more what you're talking about. It's like, a lot of times it's the kids that want to get involved, but the parents, you know, we may have skipped a generation mm -hmm. and they don't know how to get started. Right. Uh, so th that's why our Nature Centers exist. Uh, yeah. And so we've got a lot of resources out there, uh, but I would highly recommend visiting a nature center as a place to get started. Absolutely, it's a very popular attraction down it's here. It's great. You, you want to get up? Let's. Uh, yes. We'll start trying to. Uh, we may have to divide and conquer on this squash. We'll see how our how our uh, process worked out. I'm going to let you use the okay. big knife to get it that's going. A, that's a good idea. So we're going to notice gonna how just, I stood back. Too. Yeah, stand back. We're going to just. That's not terrible. Not bad. Slice it. That that uh, stem is what's getting our, in our way there. We're just going to break that the rest of the way. We're just going to cut that dude out where he's out of the way. So I'll first of all, spoon. spoon. We'll scoop. Yeah, we'll scoop that out. It's going to peel a little better, I think. Still going to have to uh, be all right. scoop those out. We'll cut it into long slices. Kind of like you would a cantaloupe, mm -hmm. and that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna tackle this. But it's gonna come off a lot easier, I think. So my favorite of these hard squashes like this, acorn squash is delicious. But I cheat. I buy the pre-cubed up kind of. Oh uh, well, squash. I don't blame you. Um, but I like to do spaghetti squash. Yes. Partly because you can poke holes in it and nuke it in the microwave, and then you don't have to deal. I'll give you those. Perfect, Trey, thank you. you. you Such a gentleman, to, thank you. To kind of cut those edges off. Got it. Cut the rind. You know, I'm a big fan of summer squash. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the uh, yellow and zucchini, but, uh, but this is really good too. It is, and you can't really put a zucchini or a yellow squash in a stew like it just falls. It yeah. just falls apart. You'd end up with a creamy squash there and so this actually will keep its texture and hold up a lot better that's right in that kind um, and they have a really good flavor it is a little bit more work but it's totally worth it this is a little bit easier than uh than, it's definitely than, easier than raw than raw Ooh, they're a little slippery though that's the thing and did we trade one problem for another <laughs> no you know, another thing I always like to remind folks when you're when you're doing something like this, when you've got you're using vegetables and you're not using all the pieces, mm -hmm. you know, like these rinds, you can make a wonderful vegetable stock. With That's this. right. And uh, that way, nothing goes to waste. Save it, put it in the freezer, and the next time you want to make a soup, mm -hmm. you've really you've got your base ready to go there. I hope we're not making too much work for you, Diana. I've got it now. I just had to get a rhythm going. Yeah, the ribs on this squash make it a little harder to I do. get around to. The good news is, this basically, we're gonna start building our, our, uh, our stew, our venison and acorn squash curry, as soon as we're finished here. That venison's been Soaking Marinating. up those good spices. Mm -hmm. All right. You are just I think, super well, swift. I think what happened was that we got, I didn't rotate our squash in the uh, uh, so we got in our easy parboiling side. pot back mm -hmm. there. And we got an easy side and a hard side. And, you know, I promise you it wasn't intentional that you got the you got the hard side there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, we'll just dice that up, and it doesn't. It, you can be a pretty, pretty large pretty dice, rough there. dice there. Yeah, we don't need a 
It doesn't have to be pretty. This is all going like again into a stew. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of taking place of your potatoes that you would probably put in a stew, but way more nutritious. Way more nutritious. Uh, yeah, but it, you're right. I mean, some of those starches mm -hmm. are gonna help sort of thicken it up and make it more of a stew than a soup. All right. Perfect. We about got it. So take a little break and then we'll pull the venison out. And, Sounds uh, good. Dump, dump, it dump and go. Yep. I like it. We'll be right back. Ranked among the nation's best value cities for travel and its most travel-worthy state capitals, Little Rock is known for its southern charm and hospitality. Request a vacation planning kit at littlerock.com and see why we say getaways are better with a southern accent. Welcome back. We have uh, gotten our a marinated venison out of the fridge and you can I don't know if you can really see how that's just soaked I, in I was that gonna I was rub. I was gonna tell you you can, I mean you can tell how it soaked up the those, mm -hmm. those spices mm -hmm. yeah. and you um, we've got our a uh, little bit of vegetable oil yeah, I've got a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil in there and medium high heat and just gonna put the venison in there, I guess. Now, are you Let's ready? Go. You, you want to do the honors? I, I should. There you I'm, go. I'm good All at right. this part. <laughs> Here, I got us oh, one. You got us one. Look at you already. Ready to go there. Oh, sizzle, sizzle. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna just uh, let that kind of keep it moving, but we really just want to get it browned on all sides. Again, this is gonna cook for at least two hours. So. You know, it doesn't have to be completely cooked. We just want to get a nice kind of crust on the outside, and then we're going to add some of our other stuff. So it, it generally takes, you know, four or five minutes to get it brown the way you, you want it to. Mm -hmm. And uh, You know, and I also think it, it's interesting that, you know, venison is a very lean meat, very lean. and which is probably one of my favorite things about it is that it is so lean. and when you cook a chili and you're using venison, you don't have to put it in the fridge and scrape the fat off the top. You know how you True. have to do if you're, if you're trying to be healthy. Um, and so you did, even though this is a non-stick skill, you still need to put a little bit of that, little vegetable, bit of that oil, vegetable oil in there. It's not fatty enough to produce like a hamburger meat nope, would. Not gonna yeah. do that really at, at all. You know, the uh, one of the keys to cooking venison and really any wild game, I, I hear this with duck a lot, like you know, duck's no good to eat. Well, the problem is that most people are, are overcooking it. Right. Uh, I tell folks with, with pretty much any game, you really don't want to go past medium. Uh, venison, it's either a low and slow like this, like we're doing, a right. stew or a chili that's going to really kind of, kind of, you know, let it tenderize in that, in, in a, a, some sort of liquid. Right. Or a high heat where you're searing, you know, like you would cook a steak. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned uh, the uh, venison backstrap or loin earlier. I'll just, you know, I want that to be nice and red in the middle, uh, coming out to pink and just a nice, you know, kind of browning on the outside. So, yeah. so I think that's looking good. We've it got a perfect. really powerful stove. So I think the next thing we'll do will be to add our onion and tomato. And I've got my nifty little scraper here and that, that comes way. in really handy. Yeah, um, you can use them for like dividing pastry and if you're making, you know, pie crust and things like that. But it's also a really good way to scoop things up and you don't you don't dull your you don't dull your knives that way. So we're basically you talked earlier about you know making a making you know using different spices in there. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, it's almost like making chili. We're making a tomato sauce, basically, a tomato-based sauce here. But man, those that those sweet, sweet um, heirloom tomatoes, mm -hmm. oh, they're gonna be so good. We're also gonna add a little bit of tomato paste to it, about a tablespoon of tomato paste. And we'll throw that in there. This is 
some I had left over. I hate to, you know, so many recipes call for one or two tablespoons, and even the little cans of tomato paste. You can, I, like I don't you, know you how you can ever you can, use. You, can, you, you, you can't use all of it. Right. Like you'd have you're to telling me you got a neat trick. Like you 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 put it in the freezer. You can. You can. That's that happens to be one of those freezer proof little Ziploc deals there that you've yep. got. But you could also just use a bag, and you can actually freeze it. All right. So I think we can probably add our. If you'll hand me that. Uh, you'll need this, but then I'm going to show you another trick. You got I a trick? Start. Okay. I have a trick too. We're going to throw our garlic in there, and here, let's go ahead and hit mm. that habanero. Man, I really love habaneros are hot, and and it's not just about adding heat though. They have this really great citrus flavor to them. Uh, you know, a jalapeno to me is a lot more like a bell pepper with some heat to it. Some heat. But the, the habanero, which is really popular in, in uh, Caribbean and, and Mexican, throughout Latin American cooking, uh, it, it, it imparts also a really kind of a, almost like an orangey, lemony sweetness mm. to it. So that's why I like, that I'm a really That's gonna go really fan. well with that curry. So, um, so I, so I talk you. about these all the time I don't have any show, of those. Yeah. And I ended up buying some at home. I got them here because for convenience store, uh, storage and granted, um, they come color coded and blue is for fish and yellow is for chicken and red is for beef and then green is for vegetables. Okay. And I don't always follow that because sometimes I just grab one. But to keep any kind of cross contamination going and they're super easy to store, they wash in a dishwasher, but then you just fold them up Look at that. And, and so, um, you know, you're going to use it anyway, so it can easily take the place of your scoop. That is going to be... Once you have that incorporated so in, I'm going to take it over here and try to show without steaming up our mirror. Yeah, show that, and I got. we're going to add a little chicken broth to it. We'll do that while we're over here. All right, so I'm going to hold this back, and maybe we won't steam it, but look how thick and rich, and it's got that... It smells so good it too. Does. It just does. It's mm -hmm. and, you know, that's it's hearty. The, they're, they're, it, it is hearty. That yeah. is a really good way to put it. That's gonna fill you up. Recipe calls for about three quarters of a cup, but basically you just want enough liquid to cover it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, so you're, because you're gonna lose a little bit during the cooking process, even though we're gonna cook it with the with the cover. But that's really. That's really about all there is to it. We're gonna, wow. we're gonna, it's, we got a good, uh, good simmer going there. And then we're going to turn that down a little bit lower. Here we go. And simmer for a couple hours, just like you would cook a chili or exactly. a Exactly. You know, check on it. It's fine. You know, it's not like rice. You can take the lid off of it and stir check it, it out, stir it, make sure that, you know, you don't have some pieces of that squash or venison that are up top and not, you know, getting that moisture to, right, to, to tenderize them mm -hmm. the way we want. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, you know, a couple hours. When we take it off, we're gonna add a little bit of cilantro and some salt and pepper. Eat be it ready up. To go. Well, I cannot wait. So we're gonna take a, a break and kind of get this all cleaned up and then we'll, we'll taste our finished product. That's the part I like the best. Mm -hmm. That's what <laughs> we do this for right there. All right, we'll be back, thanks. Named one of five secret foodie cities by Forbes Travel Guide, Little Rock has a thriving artisanal food scene, great restaurants, and a growing number of craft breweries. Request a vacation planning kit at littlerock.com and see why we say dining is better with a southern accent. All right, we are back, and it's it's been a long wait for that to cook because it smells so delicious in here that I cannot wait there to try it. There are some really nice smells wafting mm -hmm. through the room right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine coming home on a, a cool, dreary, maybe a little bit rainy fall day like we have so many of in, into the house at, yeah. after the day, and that's like what I, you come home like to. Like I said, it's like that you know first pot of chili on a mm -hmm. cold night. This is that type of hearty and... Uh, you know, very flavorful and, and some exotic flavors that really, 
you know, just kind of warms you up from the inside out. Mm -hmm. The good news is the, the wait's over. The wait we're, is we're, we're over. Ready. I'm going to chop a little cilantro if you want to get the, get, the, get the rice. This is really great over rice. Uh, you don't have to have rice. You can just put it in a bowl and eat it like a stew. But I like that rice to kind of soak up some mm -hmm. of those flavors. And, and you know, Stuttgart is the rice capital of the world. And we produce right. over half the country's rice, so we've got to support our rice farmers. We do, and that happens to be what we talked a little bit about, you know, growing up local, and that is, um, I'm from there. Ooh, that's going to steam us up. Um, grew up in Stuttgart and Hazen. Actually, why don't we do yeah, this? One of the first, uh, one of the <sighs> first rice crops ever grown in Arkansas was grown in Hazen in 1904. Not surprised. Okay, so this do, looks fantastic. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. All right. You want to fix this up? Just I will. a little rice in the bottom. I'll grab some of this after you. Rice got good and sticky there. Yeah, we so. didn't. We hadn't fluffed it up yet. That's okay. There we oh, go. Yeah. And you really don't even need much rice to make a good base because this is so thick. Absolutely. All right. Make sure we get plenty of our squash and our mm -hmm. chunks of venison and lots of that good juice. A couple more pieces of venison in there. Mm -hmm. Don't want anybody to get shortchanged. And then we'll just put a little bit of cilantro. Of course, it makes it look pretty, but it's also, you know, that cilantro brightens up the dish a little bit because these are some really, really hearty flavors. They really are. Uh, but it and cilantro smells good. It smells so. I wish for me it you, tasted you, you, like you, it you smelled. Wish you wish you liked it as, as much as uh -huh. it tasted as well as it Okay, smelled. so. All right, here we go. Do the dig honors. In. Yeah. Dig in. I'm gonna. Make sure um, you get a little bit of everything. I'm gonna get a get little a, bit. Get around the cilantro. Get around the cilantro. Just That's a little right. tad of I'll it. I'll take your share work. of cilantro. That's fair trade. Pretty hot. Mmm. I mean, it's. Oh wow, so that's good. very hot. I was going to take a bite. We're going to wait a minute then. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but I got some of that flavor. And while you're waiting, I want to tell you about one more really cool program we're doing at Game Perfect. and Fish this, this fall. An inaugural uh, project for us. First time we've done it. Um, we're going to do a mentored hunt program. You know, I mentioned earlier that we're, we're losing participation in, in hunting and fishing. It's really hard for us as an agency to just, you know, I can only take a couple of people hunting. Uh, it's we've not had safe some, after that. Right. We've had some really cool programs. Uh, we worked with, with you here at the River Market mm -hmm. in the past, uh, basically with a, a field-to-table type program where we took foodies mm -hmm. and basically through their gut lured them into hunting. You know, we take 10 or 12 people in a program like that. So we've got a really cool program, our mentored hunt program, where we're going to uh, have like a, a representative in all 75 Arkansas counties. Then they'll be responsible for like recruiting more volunteers and then all those volunteers will be able to take people hunting. So we're hoping to really get that going, cranking this fall. You know, if you want to know if any, more about that or any other Game and Fish project, agfc.com is our website. And you can learn about all the things we talked about here today uh, and lots more. Oh, absolutely. It's great, a great educational website. resource. Yes, it is. I'm glad you got to throw that in. Well, maybe, maybe I talked long enough for this to cool off now. Well, I'm huh? just going to burn my mouth. If not, I can't wait any longer. Oh, boy. Mmm. Ma'am, mm. mm -hmm. what do you think? You like Jamaican, you like curry. I like all of those things. Man, those are some really wonderful flavors. Oh yeah. my goodness, they really are. I mean, it's a, a heat. I'm staying on this side. I but a up. sweet, the cilantro kills the germs, it's okay. Mm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's soapy. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> That is so good. Is that venison not super tender? It is. It is so tender. And no really wildish taste to it that not at I all. think some people are scared of when they all it takes is for one person to cook it terrible and they're like, mm mm. I'm never eating it again, you know. Right, yeah. And so you just have to keep a open mind and follow the right procedures there, but I I love that you noticed mm. the you know, that squash, obviously, and our tomato. Are, are imparting that sweetness mm -hmm. and then our spices and our chili. So you got a mix of sweet and savory there. Oh, and that's really balanced. typical of Jamaican and a lot of Caribbean cooking. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that I love so much about that style of cuisine is that, you know, that, that blend 
where one doesn't overpower the other, but you still get a little bit of both. It's so, so good. Yeah, it really is. And it's, it's spicy, but it's a spicy that is a warm you up kind mm -hmm. of. I don't, my mouth isn't on fire. No, I can no, still absolutely. taste. Um, but if you like that, add another habanero to it. Absolutely. You know, if you want it a little spicier. Sure, but, uh, sure. That's another way that you could experiment. But the, um, I really like that the uh, pieces of squash also, and the tomatoes cook down so far that you can't even see them. No, it, again, it's they just basically become, a sauce. That's yeah. right. If you were really trying to no carbs and you didn't want to do the rice, you could eat this without the rice and Abs it would be absolutely no, fine. It's be, plenty it hearty. Would be, it would be just fine. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cook that at home for sure. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode of Chop the Rock and we encourage you to keep watching additional episodes on this station and on our YouTube page. See you next time. Thank you.